It's been such a battle. All I hear is popping. Feels like a knife in my head. I have no diagnosis. It is more common to be a conjoined twin. What you're hearing right now is literally what I hear 24-7. 365, no matter what, this audio clip right now is actually recorded from my head. If you were sitting next to me, you would hear this from my head. I just want to be better. I just don't want to click. I don't want to have my disorder. Hi, hello, I am Maddie and I have been living, suffering with a rare neurological disorder for about a year now. This has been one of the hardest years of my life and this is going to be a very hard video for me to film. I've been in so much pain this past year. Um, I've been so hopeless. Like I have not wanted to be here because of the pain and the clicking and just the fact that there's only 200, 300 cases in literature like it's been such a battle i'm here to share my story and everything i went through to get diagnosed and it was a lot so here we go april 13th 2021 i got lockjaw and it wasn't just like oh i couldn't open my mouth a little but it was like i couldn't eat i could hardly talk i was in so much pain like my jaw and my ear and the clicking i was hearing because this is the first time i heard my clicking i thought it was my jaw so obviously i was like gotta go to a dentist april 20th i was able to get in with the dentist and they were like no problem lockjaw we see it all the time you're gonna take ibuprofen like a lot of it every six hours which with Tylenol you're going to ice heat only eat liquid like just really baby my jaw and everything will go back to normal right two days later April 22nd I actually went to urgent care because the clicking and the pain was just so much where like I thought Tylenol and ibuprofen like that would help a little bit the ice the heating the liquid food not chewing hardly talking I thought that would cure something but it didn't I couldn't handle it so urgent care they said no problem all you're gonna do is take muscle relaxers like a strong dose of muscle relaxers you're gonna go to bed you're gonna wake up your jaw is gonna be relaxed you won't have pain clicking nothing you'll be good but we're like a week in and i'm losing my mind i could not sleep i could not think i couldn't eat i couldn't do anything i was so consumed with the pain and the clicking that i was like literally like I was not well. April 27th, I had my week check-in with a dentist to make sure, you know, I'm all healed, I'm good to go. We're gonna look at the jaw, examine it, we're good. No, I am worse at this point. My clicking is so loud, my dentist can hear it, everyone can hear it, like an audible click coming from my head. And I was like, what do I do? She ended up referring me to the UW, the University of Washington. I've never called someone so fast in my life. I was walking out of the dentist, calling them saying, when can you get me in? Do you have any cancellations? Like I need help. And so they were like, okay, I see you. I hear you. Let's get you in May 5th. And I was like, okay, that's coming up. I'll be strong. I can handle it. I could not handle it. May 1st, I went back to urgent care. At this point, I could not handle the ear pressure, the clicking, the jaw again. I was just like, no, I can't wait till the fifth. Like what is going on with my ears? So they looked into my ears and they're like, oh, we see a sack of fluid. Like all you gotta do is take these antibiotics. But if you don't feel any better within two days, you need to come back. Two days later, May 3rd, back at the urgent care. This is when I thought the clicking could not get any louder or more painful. It felt like a freaking flick in my ear 60 to 100 times per minute every single minute I could not escape it and I was just like please you got to help so they're like ah steroids why didn't we think of steroids let's put you on steroids and then you'll be cured two days later I'm at the University of Washington and they do this big old exam they're you know moving my jaw feeling everything around and they're like dude this isn't a jaw problem like at all like this jaw ear thing, like this is nothing to do with dentistry. Long story short with that one, they were not helpful at all and I went home crying. I was documenting a lot of the jaw issues over on Instagram and one of my followers reached out to me and they're like, oh my gosh, have you seen this article? It's a person that experienced the same thing in the ear, audible clicking, like their partner can hear it clicking, like here's an article. They actually have a fractured bone inside their ear. So like you have to go get imaging done. So that night, after after spending all day at the University of Washington, I called urgent care and I said, can I do some imaging? Like, can we get this figured out? Do I have a broken like thing in my ear that is making me 
just literally go insane no so i went to the er i mentally was so distressed at this point um the dark thoughts were getting worse i was coping with so much alcohol because i mean alcohol made it worse like the clicking but it would make me pass out so i didn't have to just like lay there and listen to my click over and over and over and over again like i couldn't do it and i know alcohol with medications isn't good and i was like i gotta figure this out i'm going to the ER mentally not well let's go get some imaging done I should have known better the ER really didn't care they did all the imaging it was good to have so I could send it over to other doctors but they were like we don't know you can leave now and so I of course got home drank a lot of alcohol couldn't handle just being let down again and like having another day of clicking during these first few weeks, I was messaging on my chart. It's an app that I use to talk to my doctors. And I told my primary care what was up, how much I was struggling. And they're like, oh, if, you know, UW said that it's not in like, you know, jaw mouth thing, like we need to get you sent over to an ENT like right away. So May 6th, I woke up and that was the first thing in my mind. I got a call of the ear, nose and throat. I gave them a call and they said, we don't take TMJ issues. And I said, no, it's not a TMJ issue. You. I went to the University of Washington. They said it had nothing to do with my jaw and like, just please take me. And here we are, May 10th. I go to the ENT facial surgeon and I was very grateful to be in his presence. Like he's an amazing doctor and we go over everything. We're doing hearing tests. At this point, I was starting to lose hearing in this ear. We're just doing all of the imaging. We're really talking about it. After reviewing everything, talking with him, just really going over everything, he did not want to diagnose me with this, but I got my diagnosis. And the type that I have is a subtype of a palatal tremor. Palatal tremor, PT, is a rare movement disorder. Movement disorders refers to a group of neurological conditions that cause abnormal increased movements. Epilepsy and Parkinson's disease are examples of more well-known movement disorders. The most common etiologies are stroke, demyelinating lesion and tumors palatal tremor has no cure but there is different types and everyone is different that has had this again only a couple hundred cases in literature so i do not need you to tell me to take some grass leaf and shove it up my nose i'm not going to do that i know some people are just trying to help and i appreciate it but please know that like this is like epilepsy this is like parkinson's would you tell someone with epilepsy to shove grass up their nose and snort it 20 times a day no you wouldn't so please stop telling me to do that. It is a neurological disorder where my brain tells a part of my body to spasm, which that spasming causes my ear to open and close. So like when you're on an airplane and your ears are popping and that painful like pop feeling, imagine that 60 to 100 times per minute, every single minute, no matter what, sometimes it's louder and sometimes it like fully takes over my brain where all I can hear and focus on is that and I have panic and fear. Anyway, 10 days later, May 24th, my dentist wanted to see me again to see how my jaw was doing. Went in, she's like, why didn't this stop? And we went over everything and that was a waste of time and money. That leads us to June 10th. I went to see my primary care doctor and she put me on a different prescription. I forgot to mention the ENT put me on a anti-seizure medication that is supposed to help with you know movement disorders and stop me having this didn't work and so my primary care is like let's try another one and also during this appointment she got me set up with a referral to go to a neurologist and I was really excited about that because now we know it's all in my head and right when I left her office I called the clinic for neurology and I said hey my doctor just put in a referral I need to get in please as soon as possible like when can you get me in and they're like um end of august and i was like okay and during that time i uh, coped a lot with alcohol and i was not okay august 24th here we are we are at the neurologist now and i was so excited and hopeful and like we did all the basic stuff in the beginning we went over my medications everything that i've tried what i you know makes it worse all of that we did more imaging he set up more imaging for me to do later like honestly he is an amazing person and he promised and told me that we are going to do everything we possibly can to help you but 
I have never treated this before. This clinic has never seen this before. But again, it's a movement disorder. So if we can help manage other movement disorders, maybe we can help you out. We're going to try it all. But in the meantime, I'm going to put a referral in for the University of Washington. This time, the referral for the University of Washington was for a movement disorder specialist in the neurology department. Uh, he's a professor that is very, very highly well known, an amazing, amazing person. But again, we had to start it now because he is so great at what he does. Um, it can take six months for him to even look at the referral. Overall, August 24th, that appointment went great. I started to have hope again. I was like, okay, he's gonna try everything. Then I get to see like the super smart genius person, like we're gonna find something, right? During the first couple of weeks of September, I was put on new medication because you know what? We're gonna try everything to get this to stop. And I had to go through a lot of side effects, but but I was, you know, desperate at this point. So I was on a couple different medications, trying those, stopping those, trying new ones, stopping new ones, going through all the ups and downs. Now we're at September 22nd and I had to go do more imaging and get new medication because everything that we have tried so far has not worked. And then a week later, September 29th, I developed a terrible rash. I was so itchy and my skin on my feet, um, was falling off. My skin was falling off, like flaking off. Obviously, I was concerned about this and I was having a allergic reaction. I was told to go to the ER. So here I am again at the ER and they said, you know what? Just stop the medication. If you can't breathe, come back at this point. Hospitals are full again and it was not a life or death thing in their mind, um, but my neurologist was very, very concerned. Two weeks later, October 13th, I got lockjaw again my jaw froze up just like how it did in the beginning how all of this i thought started you know couldn't eat couldn't move my mouth went to my primary care and they're like oh we'll give you new medication um but you are running out of like anti-seizure meds and like different other meds that they use for movement disorders um so let's just try this one and go see your neurologist, you know? I tried to call and make an appointment, but there was a super long, I think a two or three month waiting list to actually see him in person again. So I was like, screw it. I'm going to message him on my chart, the little website app that I use to talk to all my doctors. Oh, and at this point I learned I have done everything that he could do. All of it. And oh, I'm going to get emotional again. Cause this was a really, really hard time. Um, we did it all. Everything that he could do, he felt so bad that he couldn't help me anymore. And he had so much hope that he would be able to be able to help me live a life not in so much pain and so much stress and so much mental distress. Um, but he released me as a patient um, because there's nothing he could do. So now I'm in the waiting game again. Where, when can I go to the UW and see the movement disorder neurologist? You know, when can that happen? Like I needed that so, so bad. I waited and I waited and I waited and I didn't get any calls. I did one check-in where I called and they're like, we haven't looked at your referral yet. Like this doctor is very busy. Like, ma'am, please wait until we call you, you know? Okay. And that leads us to today. Right now when I'm filming, it is April 12th. Tomorrow will be my one year with my disorder, you know, April 13th. I'll have a little clicking party. No, but really, um, I called the UW today and I said, hi, um, it's been like eight months and I like, I need help. You know what they said? We were about to call you. Your referral went through. We are ready to see you. I get to see them at the end of June. So this story is not over, but it's been a year. This is everything that's happened within a year. And last thing this past year has also been the hardest year with my family, uh, my grandpa dealing with mental health and my grandma's surgery and my second mom being in the ICU. Like it so much stress has happened in my life and I'm trying so hard to keep going but I also know that I have to give myself like time for this do you know what I mean like I when I sit at my desk and I'm trying to answer an email I, I can't I literally have to have a podcast on and music on so I'm not focused on this so I can send one email a year ago um that five minute project is now taking me a half an hour Everything is so much more difficult and I'm trying to give myself peace and know that like 
this is just my body now but it's also so hard I have so many ups and downs some days I'm like okay I can live with this you know podcast music you know kind of tune it out but other days I'm stuck on the couch and it's freaking just flick 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 in my ear constantly and at this point I'm over 53 million clicks this year alone I've heard 53 million clicks like I don't I don't know how I'm doing it and that's one thing I know about myself is I'm very resilient and I, but I'm also very hard on myself so I think I should be doing more but then I also remember like oh my gosh I have this disorder that is so painful and like I'm still, I guess, learning balance and learning how to live with this. So wish me luck for my June appointment. Um, if you want, again, any more updates, please leave them down below. If you have questions, yes, you can ask the OA, but this topic is so hard for me to like mentally prepare. Like I wanted to do this video the first month that this happened to me. It, it's been a year and now I finally have like been able to talk about it. So if I don't answer down below, please know that this is just very, very hard for me. Um, I'm up and down with crying again, but thank you for being here. Thank you for supporting me. Um, I want to make all of this my life um but again it's very hard when I don't have the energy to do stuff so thank you if you want to join my patreon that would be amazing um recipes workouts everything is there and just a way to support me through this because it's also very expensive too I'm in so much debt okay bye